as I was leaving, as I do every Sunday morning, to go get a glass of tea and a snack between the two services, I was walking out and somebody said to me, that choir is just amazing, just amazing. They weren't saying that to you, but they were saying that about you. (laughs) And it was kind of neat to hear. You never know whether people deeply appreciate something until they say something about it. And I want you to know that. Then I went to the QT where I get my iced tea every Sunday morning. And I saw a woman. She had on blue jeans and a t-shirt. And the t-shirt said, Dear Karma, I have a list of people you missed. (laughs) And I thought to myself, it's Sunday morning, come on. (laughs) We live in a different world, gentlemen and ladies. It's a different place. Some of the patterns and exceptional ways of doing things, we've lost. I don't believe in karma, but I do believe in God. And I think what you believe matters. Take the... uh, Take the lepers from the story that I'm about to read. Just think about them as you listen to these words. From Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse, I would invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went... They were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God in a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? None of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Please be seated. Greg Anderson in in Living Life on Purpose tells a story about a man whose wife had left him. He was completely depressed. He had lost faith in himself. He had lost faith in other people. He had lost faith in God. He found no joy in living. And one rainy morning, this man went to a small neighborhood diner to have a breakfast. And although several people were at the diner, no one was speaking to anyone else. No conversation. People looking at the table. And although several people were at the diner, they weren't speaking. He was hunched over in a counter, 
and he was stirring his coffee with a spoon. In one of those small booths along the windows, a, a young mother sat with a little girl. They had just been served their food when, when the little girl broke the sad silence by almost shouting, Mama, Mama, why don't we say our prayers here? You ever notice that? People have a hard time praying when other people are looking. They don't know what to do with that. This waitress knew what to do. The waitress who had just served them breakfast <clears throat> turned around and looked at that little girl and she said, sure, honey, we pray here. Would you pray for us? And she turned her looked at the rest of the people in the restaurant and said, bow your heads. And surprisingly, one by one, heads went down. The little girl then bowed her head, folded her hands and said, God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. Amen. Greg Anderson says that prayer changed the entire atmosphere. People began to talk with one another. The waitress said, you know, we should do this every morning. What a novel idea. And all of a sudden, said our friend, my whole frame of mind started to improve. From that little girl's example, I started to thank God for all the things that I did have and stopped majoring in all the things I didn't have, and I started to be grateful. Our text this morning is familiar. You've heard this story hundreds of times. It's a miracle story, but it is so much more. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten lepers, and they stood at a far distance. They breathed and ate. They had hopes and fears and aspirations and feelings just like you and me. Yet there was a tragic sense in which they were already dead. They were the walking dead. Leprosy was the most dreaded of all ancient diseases. It ate away at the body and it left its victims maimed and disfigured. There was no known cure. In their hopes for a family life, a useful occupation, plans for the future, They were dead men. But even in the midst of this horrible situation, these lepers had something to be thankful for. In their common misery, they had banded together and they had found each other. It is an interesting thing to note that, that one of these ten lepers was a Samaritan. Now, a good Jew in that day and time would have had absolutely no dealings at all with a Samaritan. They looked upon Samaritans as dogs, half-breeds. Yet in the common misery of their leprosy, these men had forgotten that they were Jew and Samaritan, and, and they realized only that they were Men in need. Some of you might say, well, you know, misery does love company. Maybe so. But I know there is power in fellowship. There's power in camaraderie. There's power in being together, especially the fellowship of people who have a common need and a common purpose. Even lepers found it so. 
Which I think brings us to the first point of this story. Which is simply this. Even in the midst of their problems, there's always something to be thankful for. Even in the midst of everything you face in your life, there's always something to be thankful for. Some of you may be thinking, well, that's easy for you to say, preacher, but, but you don't know the problems and circumstances that I'm dealing with now. And I'm sure there are many in this nation who suggest at this time in our nation's history, maybe there's very little for which to be grateful. Certainly, I cannot deny the reality of our problems that exist. In many cases, very deep and troubling pains and sorrows. But friends, there is no one sitting in the sound of my voice this morning who has had it worse than 10 lepers in the leper colony. What could be worse than that? Yet, they had something to be thankful for. Daniel Defoe wrote a book called Robinson Crusoe. And the first thing that Caruso did when he found himself on a deserted island was to make a list. An interesting list, by the way. On one side of the list, he wrote down all of his problems. And on the other side of the list, he wrote down all of his blessings. And on one side, he wrote, I don't have any clothes. On the other side, he wrote, all of the weather is warm. And I don't really need them. On one side, he wrote, all of our provisions were lost. On the other side, he wrote, but there's fresh fruit and water on the island. On one side, he went on down and on down. And in this fashion, he discovered that for every negative aspect of, about his situation, there was a positive aspect, something to be thankful for. It's easy to find ourselves on an island of despair. Perhaps it's time we sit down and take an inventory of our blessings, and what God has done for us, the things he's made possible. Look at the story with me again. As Jesus entered the village, this band of 10 lepers sought him out. And as a group, they approached him with the words, Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. Have mercy on us. And Jesus responded, Go show yourselves to the priests. Now, initially, that might sound strange to us. But the fact is that the priests of that day were also the public health officials in their communities. They were the ones that declared whether or not you were healed. They made that decision. And if a person had been cured from an infectious disease, he had to present himself to the priest to receive a health certificate. And no doubt the lepers were puzzled by Jesus' command. To say that it was premature, well, that's kind of an understatement. Why bother to get a certificate of health when you haven't even been cured? Yet they believed his words, and they did as he commanded. I don't know how to explain what happened next. I can't begin to tell you what happened. But the fact is, that as these 10 lepers were on their way to the priest, something happened to them. Their numbness began to pass. The sores that scarred their hands and faces began to vanish. Their strength began to return. 
Luke says simply, and it came to pass as they went, they were healed. As they had obeyed the command of Christ, their longing for healing had come. And at this point, we feel that we don't have to even finish the story for we certainly know how it will end. These cured men go running back to Jesus with words, blessed heather, great physician, praise be to Jesus. Isn't that the way it ends? Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It ends otherwise. See, that's not how the evangelist tells the story at all. Nine of the ten were never heard from again. Never made their faces known again. And that, my friends, is a pitiful revelation of human nature. What rank ingratitude and surely this is not typical. This can't be a picture of 90% of the people in the world. But then again, according to a Gallup poll, nine out of 10 American families, when they sit down this Thanksgiving coming next month, when they sit down to eat, one out of 10 families will say prayers of thanksgiving. In the United States of America, we live in a world that no longer understands that all our blessings come from God. But there was one who returned, one who came back. And as the scriptures say, he returned to, to praise God with a loud voice. And what about you? What about you? Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And giving thanks is all about the orientation of your heart. It's about recognizing the source of our blessings and responding with gratitude. In just 14 days, we will consecrate your commitments to God's work. It's Covenant Sunday. Your time, your talents, and your gifts, this is your opportunity to stand with the leper who returned to praise God so that we can represent in the world a people who understand where all our blessings come from. In spite of all the impediments that life throws at you, in spite of the lure of stuff, in spite of the myriad of voices clamoring for your loyalty, I hope that you will align your life priorities with the one who has given you everything and when you do, your life will be blessed. God bless. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. May God use you in the service of his kingdom. Amen. Stand with me as we affirm our faith together. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From
Just in case you don't know it, it's pouring down rain. And that's something to be thankful for. We haven't had enough, and we are grateful for what God gives. Live your life in thanksgiving. Be thankful for what you do have. And don't worry about what you don't have. Live for God every day, and your life will be blessed. Go in peace. Serve God and your neighbor in all that you do. And the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you now and always. Amen.